Hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus is Lord. <clears throat> so I was minding my own business the other day. And that's when God speaks to you. When your mind's not thinking about God or the things of God. And you're not trying to come up with some word from God. Usually when he speaks to me I'm distracted. Like I'm taking a shower, I'm washing my hair and boom he speaks to me. Or I'm driving along, thinking about something else, and then boom, he gives me a... Well, yesterday, it happened again. Just minding my own business. Not doing anything. And all of a sudden, bam, the Lord showed me something. Here's what he said. He said, in most cases, those who are lukewarm love people and put people first ahead of God and ahead of the Holy Spirit. I went, whoa, yeah, so true. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your mind, and all of your strength. Put God first. That was Eli's problem. He put his sons, Hopney and Phinehas, ahead of God. And that's why he didn't want to discipline his sons. He was afraid to discipline them. He didn't want to get on their bad side. He didn't want to turn his sons into his enemies. They were bad seed. And he knew if I have to keep disciplining these boys, it never ends. So he had to make a decision. Am I going to put God first or am I going to let these boys of mine be more important than God? And that's what the Lord showed me. He told me that clearly. He said, in most cases, lukewarm is putting people and the needs of people and the wants of people ahead of and more important than the Holy Spirit. And then when he told me that, man, it connected a bunch of stuff for me. Woohoo! Because I remember I went to a church and I'm telling you, the, the Holy Spirit would move and God, I got to say this, and I, I don't want to say this, I don't want to sound like I'm boasting and stuff like that, but there is no boasting in Christ Jesus. It's the power of the Holy Spirit, and God is real, and Jesus is Lord, and for those who obey God, God will prove himself, and God will also honor you and prove to you and to prove to others around you that you're obedient. In other words, when you obey God, God will show you special respect among your brothers. Just like when the Lord spoke to me, told me to go sell cars. I had a group of friends that all we all hung out together. And I went to sell cars. All of a sudden, I was making ten, fifteen thousand 15000 a month. Four or five of those other guys went to other dealerships and got hired. And not a single one of them could continue, could sell cars. In other words, because of my obedience, God honored me and blessed me and exalted me among the bro among my brothers. And those who tried to do what I was doing couldn't. Just saying. So when you're obedient to God, when you're doing God's will. God will bless you. So I remember this one time, <clears throat> there was these, this, uh, it was like a prophetic service. And the, the tradition, the way we would do it, it was when we all got together, there was a, 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 those little chairs, and they would be set up in a circle or a semicircle, and then one chair in the middle. And whoever was sitting in the chair in the middle was being ministered to. And everybody on the outside chairs around them would minister to them. So, for example, let's say there's ten people in the room. There's ten chairs and one in the middle. And by the Holy Spirit, a lot of times, it's kind of weird, like, the Lord started to use me in that setting, and I think he he started to, let me just say it this way, he started to use me, and he started to use me mightily with power and accuracy, 
And I could tell that the more God used me, the more it challenged the pastor and the associate pastor. In other words, God was work God was using me, and the fact that he was using me also caused the pastor's heart caused it crucified his flesh. Let's just say it that way. It caused a little bit of crucifixion of his flesh. Now you say, what do you mean by that? It was a trial for him to see that God was using me more than God was using him. And frankly, I don't care. I really don't. There's been many times when I go into a place and I'll, I'll say, I'll choose someone out and say, God's going to use you. Right now, you have a word. And they'll look at me like, what? I have a word? And I'll be like, yep, I need you to pray for that person. And they'll be like, well, okay. And as they're praying, as they start to pray, suddenly it just starts to flow. And then, and then I'll be like, I'll see it. Somebody just had a vision. You just, God just something. And I, you know what? By the Holy Spirit, I would even tell people, God wants to say something through you and he just revealed something to you and you need to tell them. In other words, the person in the middle was just sitting there being ministered to and God wasn't using me to speak the words. God was using other people in the room but I was kind of saying, what God just showed you, that's for her. You need to speak that. And they'd be like, oh, okay. Like, sometimes they look at me like, how'd you know God just showed me something? <laughs> um, but what the pastor used to do is when somebody needed, when somebody sat into the middle of the, in the Usually we'd choose somebody, okay, you're next, you're next, and it was by the Holy Spirit. And a lot of people had different giftings. Some people would say, I have a vision, I see you, you know, sitting at your computer and praying or something, you know, whatever. Or prophecy by word. Or to pray over someone, and as you pray, your prayers are prophetic. In other words, you pray for exactly the same thing. That happens a lot where I pray for someone and they go, wow, you just prayed exactly what I've been praying for. Okay, that's confirmation. It's God's will. Or while you're praying for him, Lord, I just pray you bless this person, bless Bob and touch him. And Bob, Bob's concerned about his grandma. So we pray about Bob's grandma, you know, or something like that. That's just an example. And they're like, yeah, yeah, I've been praying for my grandma. She's sick and getting old. I'm just using that as an example. But, so what the pastor would do is when somebody got into that center seat, we were all around ready to minister to that person. The pastor would say, okay, tell us what you need prayer about. And I told the pastor, don't do that anymore. Because one time this kid sits down and I got a word for him. And I can't remember exactly what it was because it was a while ago. But it was something about he was concerned about his future and he needed to know what to do because he was going into college and he has to choose a major and he needs to know what classes to take. And I was getting a word. I knew that. I was about to say that. And then the pastor says, what do you need prayer about? And he says, oh, I need prayer because I'm start I'm in this school and I got to choose a major and I need to know what direction I need to go. I was just like, ah. I was just about to pray that. And the reason it's frustrating is if somebody tells you everything they need prayer for, then a minute later you pray for everything they need prayer for, they just think, wow, thanks for praying for me. But if they don't tell you anything, if they don't say a single word and they keep their lip zipped, and then you start praying, and you pray for everything that's on their heart. Then they go, wow, that's God. Everything you said, uh, everything you prayed about is stuff up. It's been on my heart for weeks. You see the difference? And it's something about stepping out by faith and telling people, no, no, it's okay. You don't have to tell me anything. We're just going to start praying. And by keeping control of the meeting and keeping the Holy Spirit in control. That's how you keep the Holy Spirit in control. You say, what do you mean by that? How do you mean that? Well, I'll give you an example. First of all, during, that, during one of those meetings, I had just told the pastor, don't ask people what they need prayer for. Let the Holy Spirit bring it out. God is using the people and God will reveal it. And you know what he did? Intentionally... 
almost in rebellion to the Holy Spirit. And just so you know, I was telling him that by the Holy Spirit to try to bring him to the next level of prophecy. But instead of doing what I said, he was like, I'm the pastor in this place. I'll do it my way. So he would continue to ask people what they need prayer for before we all prayed. So at one point in the middle of the service, I stopped everything and I said, listen, don't anybody tell us what you need prayer for, because if you tell us, then, and I explained what I just said, if you tell us everything you need prayer for, then when we pray for it, you're just going to think that we just think, learned from you what you need prayer about. That's how psychics work. When you go in to see a psychic, they'll look at you and they'll see that you don't have a ring on your finger and they'll see that you have a Chanel purse and they'll be like, okay, you, you know, you're not married, are you? You know, that, you like brand name items, don't you? And that person's like, yes, how did you know? How did you? Well, he knew because you're not having, you don't have a ring on and you have a Chanel purse, <laughs> you know? You, I'm just saying, if somebody sits down and tells you everything they need prayer about and everything that's on their heart, and then two minutes later, you pray for all that stuff, no big deal, anybody can do that. But if somebody is about to tell you and you say, no, no, don't tell me, and then the Holy Spirit brings all that stuff out, you see, then they go, wow, that was God. So I was trying to explain that to the pastor. So he kept asking people as soon as they'd sit in the chair, tell me what you need prayer about. Finally, I said, da, 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 da. I said, don't do that. Let us just minister. Well, he that rubbed him the wrong way. So this lady steps up and she gets in the chair and the pastor asks her, he goes, what do you need prayer about? And she said, well, just like he said, why don't we just let the Holy Spirit reveal it? And then I started to pray. And do I'm telling you, and I'm not saying this to boast because this is available to anyone who obeys God and is willing to put God first and is a servant of the Lord. But as I started to speak, everything I said, she's like, whoa. And even the friend that she was with was like, whoa. And both of them, in the middle of everything I was saying, they both looked at each other. And the, and one the one lady says, this is amazing. Because I was hitting every single thing that she had on her heart. And then at the end of it, both of them were like, we were talking about everything that you just said. We were talking about in the car on the drive when we drove up. And we've been, and, and everything I had talked about, I had prayed for her about her artistic gifting and that she's starting a new venture for the Lord. And it's a gifting from the Lord and it's artistic and all this stuff, everything, I hit everything. And then at the end of it, she testified and said, all, everything you said was accurate, 100% right on. And even her friend was sitting there going, this is amazing. Like they had never seen anything, anybody moved by the Holy Spirit before. Now, what's this have to do with lukewarm? I'm getting, I'm getting to that. Because it's about how you keep the Holy Spirit in control of the meeting. And I'll give you, and, uh, and it's, co it's coming, okay? I'll explain it. So, so I just proved to everybody in the room that what I was saying was from God. The next person stepped up. Same thing, but it wasn't just me being used of God. The, everybody in the room started to get visions, prophecy for the person who was in the, in the seat. And even in sometimes, I'd be speaking, I'd say something, and then I'd stop, and I'd point to the next person. And that person would say, okay, yeah, I got something just a second ago while he was saying that. I saw, you know, and the next person would start speaking. And the gift of God would drop on people, just like the Bible says, when you come together, everyone has a hymn, a song, a prophecy, or a word. And he's, and the Bible says uh, that you can all prophesy in turn. And if revelation comes to someone who is sitting down, the person who speaks at first shall stop. And you can all prophesy in turn. What does that mean? That means sometimes one person will grandstand. They'll start to speak and they'll keep talking. Blah, 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 blah. But if revelation comes to someone else, that first person who first speaks needs to stop so that the other person who just got a revelation can say the revelation that they have. 
And by being sensitive to the Holy Spirit, you can recognize that. So while I was speaking, boom, I noticed the lady over here just got hit by, by a revelation. And then I finished what I was saying and I looked right at her and said, what you just saw, whatever that was, you speak it out. And she's like, yeah, the Lord just spoke. To me. And then as soon as she was done, you could see the next person getting a revelation because they're like, oh, 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 oh. And they wanted to say something. So the Holy Spirit would drop on people and everybody got to, and the Bible says each one can be used of God and uh, you can all prophesy in turn. And I should do a whole video just on that. But I'm talking about lukewarm now. So we're going to get back to that. FYI, just so you know, that pastor, he's no longer doesn't have a church anymore. He's no longer in the ministry. Okay, and I can tell you that I could have told them that back then, that if you don't start listening and come to the next level that God wants you to come to, and my word for him was, you're not lukewarm. Why is it that your teaching and your preaching is lukewarm? And that was the first pastor that I got a word for, that um, lukewarm teaching only teaches half of God's word. They only teach the blessings and the love and the mercy and the goodness and the kindness. They don't teach the other side, which is, you know, they teach, if you obey God, you'll be blessed. And if you obey God, you'll be this. This is it. They teach all the blessings of God for obedience, but they never talk about the curses. The Bible says if, you, if, you, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the fruit of the land. But if you're not willing and if you're not obedient, the Bible says you'll be cursed with the curse. So in the one case... Those who are obedient, they'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the in the in the country, blessed that their kneading trough will be blessed, and their you know their everything will be blessed. And then the very next chapter, it talks about. But if you're not obedient, and if you're not careful to obey God, you'll be cursed in the city and cursed in the field, and your and and the the womb will be cursed, and your this will be cursed. And that's why women have children that are uh, rebellious to God. Just saying. So, it all comes back down to obedience. But, if all you do is teach the blessings, and you don't teach that there's, there's okay, you only teach that there's a reward. It's just, you're not rightly dividing the word of truth, and you're overbalanced. And so, I had to explain to this pastor, you need to balance your teaching out. And really teach the whole counsel of God. Rightly dividing the word of truth. What's that mean when you divide something? You're cutting it up. You're properly balancing it out. In the one minute God says, you know, well done my good and faithful servant. And then in the next verse it says, you wicked and lazy servant. And, and throw him outside where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. You can't just talk about, oh, you blessed servant, enter into the joy, and all you do is talk about the blessing and the blessed and the blessed, 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 and never talk about the disobedient. You who are lukewarm, God's going to vomit you up. Anyway, so what's this have to do with, with lukewarm? Well, let's get to that. What would happen is there was one particular lady that would show up to these services and the minute the pastor would say, what do you need prayer for? Oh my gosh. This lady would start talking and just, it would grieve the Holy Spirit and all hell would come out of her mouth. Just, oh my, my brother-in-law's on crack and he brought a whore into the house the other day and he's staying with me and oh my husband got fired from his job and, and, and he went off and smoked marijuana with my bro with my cousin and now my cousin has got arrested and is in jail and all this and she would just ramble on about all this terrible awful worldly stuff so i told the pastor i said dude you can't even give this lady a chance to say a single word because she's filthy this woman was just there to quench and grieve the holy spirit and I remember one specific service. The power of God was present. I could see angels in my peripheral. Um, the Holy Spirit was moving. One person had just got touched by the Holy Spirit and had a bunch of prophecy for him. And then we put another person in the seat and everybody was praying for him. And there was just the presence of God. And then this lady gets into the seat. 
And I remember I was about to say, oh, no, you don't. Don't even let her say a single word. I was going to just say, you be quiet now. We're going to pray for you. But the pastor said, what do you need prayer for? And that gave her the open door to start talking. And next thing you know, she's talking about how her husband got fired from his job and done ran off and is on crack. And, and her son just got out of jail and brought home a whole, and just all this crazy stuff. And, I, and as she was talking, I had either the option to tell her to shut up right now or I had to hold my peace and let her finish. And as she is talking, I watched the angels turn around and walk out. And by the time she was done, I was grieved and I left. I was like, I'm not doing, I'm not. And the, and the meeting, basically the service was over. And the move of God ended right then and there. Now, if the pastor had done what I told him to do, he wouldn't have let her say anything. We would have gathered around her, prayed for everything she needs prayer for, and told her, okay, we're done. Thank you. Sit down. But he put her and made her more important than the Holy Spirit. This lady, this disobedient woman, was more important to the pastor than the move of God. And plus, he might have been a little bit jealous of me because I was coming in. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, I was taking over that service. I'll tell you right now, I would take over the service by the power of God. And if they didn't like it, there was no prophecy. In other words, if they were like, well, we don't like him, we're going to not have him, we're not going to, you know, like if they resisted me, I was like, I'd step away and say, okay, I'm going to go stand over there and pray. And they'd all be sitting there looking at each other and no prophecy would come forth. Then I'd come over and say, are you guys ready to start? And they knew, they knew. See, that's what a prophet, does. that's the purpose and call. A lot of people don't like that. I think you're a false prophet. Well, if you think I'm a false prophet, wait till you meet a real prophet then because it's going to be even worse. The two witnesses, are you kidding? The Bible says they torment the inhabitants of the earth and they have the power to turn water into blood. And in another verse, it says all of the inhabitants of the earth are forced to drink blood because they have shed the blood of God's prophets and saints. How would you like that? A prophet come to town and just basically straight up torment you with the words of his prophecy and then turn all the waters in the whole town into blood and nobody can drink and then you're forced to drink blood and the Bible says like that of a dead man. Just saying. You think it's bad when somebody comes in and tells you, tells the pastor, please don't ask these people what they need prayer for but let the holy spirit reveal it oh we don't like that you're coming in taking control and being mean and you're not in authority here well what are you going to do when the two witnesses show up and and call down every sort of plague the bible says they have the power to shut up the heavens so it will not rain they have power to turn waters into blood and then when we read revelation chapter 16 we see the waters are being turned into blood so you don't like a little mini, weaky, little wimpy little prophet like me coming up and telling you, you who are lukewarm, God's going to vomit you up? What are you going to do when the two witnesses step up and it's their turn? And they say, oh, you don't like us? Well, guess what happens to anybody who tries to harm us? <sighs> Fire comes out of their mouth and burns them up. What are you going to do then? Well, we don't like that prophet. <sighs> you can complain about me and at least you're not going to get burned up and have to drink blood. I'm just saying. <laughs> aren't you aren't you glad? <laughs> anyway, that pastor's no longer in the ministry. And you know, quite frankly, the word I had for him is is God doesn't need another lukewarm church. That was the word. And 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 I told him I said, "You're not lukewarm. Why is it that your teaching is lukewarm?" Why is it that your Sunday teaching is like a little children's Bible school, Sunday school, little kid's Sunday school teaching? And that's what it was. On Sunday, I went to his church, and I was like, is this like, you would think there was a bunch of kindergartners in the room by his teaching. I mean, it was just like, and then God starts using me on his Friday night service to take over and proof that I'm from God is how the people responded. It was just like Jesus. 
how the Pharisees wanted to kill Jesus. They wanted to drive him off, but they couldn't because the people said he is a prophet. Same with John the Baptist. They were in some places in the Bible. It says, well, we better not mess with John the Baptist because the people are saying he's he's a prophet. They said the same thing about Jesus. Well, the same thing was kind of going on in the church. The pastor didn't like me and the associate pastor didn't like me. I had taken authority over both of them, told them both to be quiet and let and, and let the Holy Spirit reveal it, and then proved it by the power of God. And they were probably, they were talking to each other like, we got to get this guy out of here. But when they come back to the service and see the woman sitting in the chair, weeping her eyes out, and her best friend standing there saying, everything you said is straight from God. Oh, it's totally right. And they couldn't do anything. I remember, <laughs> I remember there was three people in the corner. And I, and I knew they were talking about me. I walked over there. And it turns out it was two ladies talking to the pastor, one of the associate pastor's wife. And when I walked up, the associate pastor's wife was, she was in that place where she knew I was a prophet. She also knew I stepped on her husband's toes. And listen, you who are lukewarm, God's going to vomit you up. And you who are ministers and preachers of lukewarm disobedience, God will, will show you up in one minute by a real prophet. And I'm not saying this to boast. I'm just saying, usually God doesn't use me like that. Well, actually, God, you know what? It's not all fun to walk into a room and create division where the pastor doesn't like you and you just told him he's lukewarm and he needs to get his heart right with God. And then the next minute later, the power of the Holy Spirit is using you and people are crying and, and agreeing with you and saying, that's God. And not just that, like a dozen people in the room knew that I was a prophet of God, showing me special respect. I'm just saying, and I'm not saying this to boast because any, this is available to anyone who's obedient to God and will put God first. But you who are lukewarm, God's going to vomit you up. And when you put people first, like that one lady that I was saying, every time she had the opportunity to speak, it would grieve the Holy Spirit. And for a pastor to not recognize that after the third, fourth time, this literally, this lady was the last person to speak every single service. Because the minute she starts talking, death, hell, and the grave would come out of her mouth, and the angels of God would leave, and the presence of God would leave, and I couldn't even prophesy a single word after she was done talking. I just, I was like, okay, service is over, I'm out of here. And that was consistent, and I finally, so he was putting this woman, he should have told the lady, listen, he, he's better off telling that lady, why don't you go find another church? Rather than letting someone come in and dismantle the move of the Holy Spirit. And that's exactly what that lady was doing. She was a blemish in the love feast. Lukewarm, disobedient. And then here's, here's the pastor making her more important than the move of the Holy Spirit. Partly because he's jealous. Partly because he doesn't know what to do about it. He's never been faced with the world prophet who's going to challenge him to have to either come up to the next, next level or you're done in the ministry. And that's basically what it comes down to. And that's what it come, came down to for him. And I tell you, within probably three months, he no longer had that ministry. It was no longer in the church. And as a matter of fact, that same church building, there's a completely different church there now. It's a Mexican church altogether, all Espanol. I'm just saying. So if you're not going to get with what God is doing, if you're going to reject a prophet, go right ahead. But guess what? If you don't like... Uh, if you don't like it, you won't be in the ministry anymore. And God will send the next prophet who's going to come in with even more power and not show any mercy. He's going to be like, oh, okay, it's time to turn the waters into blood. Y'all going to have to drink water. Not only that, it's not going to rain for three years. And if you don't like it, anybody who tries to harm me, fire comes out of their mouth. I'm telling you, the two witnesses are coming, and when they do, those who are left behind, the inhabitants of the, of the earth, whether you're a Christian or not, whether you're lukewarm, disobedient, foolish virgins, they're all going to be left behind, and they're all going to come under attack by the locusts that have the sting of a scorpion, and they're all going to have to drink blood 
like that of a dead man. And that's written in God's word. And it's going to be the two witnesses who are going to proclaim it directly to them and tell them it's because of your lukewarm disobedience for you have taken the mark of the beast and you have worshipped the beast and his image and you have shed the blood of God's prophets and saints. Therefore, by this time tomorrow, all of the waters will be turned to blood. That's what the pro the two witnesses are going to be prophesying. If you don't like it, if you don't believe me, talk to me in 10 years. Once we get into eternity, to, in, after, talk to me after the 1,260 days that the pr two witnesses are supposed to prophesy. Then we'll see. In other words, what I'm saying is when we look back in history from that point in time of the future, when you look back, now tell me I'm wrong. Some of you lukewarm people are going to fall away from God, take the mark of the beast, and you're going to say, I thought the rapture was going to already happen by now. And you're going to watch me say this right now and say, oh, you're a false prophet, you're wrong. Oh yeah, well tell me in five years from now. I'm just saying, it's 2000, it's February 2016, tell me in February 2020. I'm just saying. I know what the Lord's telling me. Listen, anybody who teaches that there's some sort of revival for those who are left behind, there's only two types of people who are left behind. Those with the seal of God on their forehead and those who have fallen away, the wicked, disobedient inhabitants of the earth. And the Bible says, just like in the days of Noah, the flood destroyed them all. And just like in the days of Lot, the day Lot left Sodom, the, that God destroyed them all in the same way that after the rapture, after the harvest of the earth, God comes back and gets the wise virgins, the wise virgins who are ready, and the foolish virgins who are left behind. Jesus says, depart from me, for I never knew you, and the door is closed. And everybody who's left behind will be destroyed except for the two witnesses. And by the time, actually, not the two witnesses, the 144,000, and out of the 144,000, two of them are the two witnesses. And at the very end, when you, those two witnesses are put to death, they're the last two guys on the face of the planet who are properly serving God. 